Hello, beautiful people, and my beautiful, beautiful Jennifer Doran. How are you? I am good, thank you. How are you? Just getting out okay. Hello, oh, Eric. Okay. I love you. And, uh, of course, I love you too, Jennifer. Anyway, she knows that. Her information yes, is in the box, and we'll be on screen soon. Okay. We're going to have some Eric, Eric sends his love too. So, oh. Wait, what, did you say we're having three people on? Wait, what was that? No, Chupa, we're going to have a creepy one. Oh, a creepy one. Okay. <laughs> the Chupa Cabra. It's literally goat sucker from Spanish. Chupa sucks. Cabras goats. Mm. Is a legendary creature or cryptid in the folklore or parts of the Americas. The name comes from the animal's um, reported vampirism. The Chupa Cabra is said to attack and drink the blood of livestock, including goats. Physical descriptions of the, of the creature vary. In Puerto Rico and in Hispanic America, it is generally described as a heavy creature, reptilian and alien-like, roughly the size of a small bear, and with a row of spines reaching from the neck to the base of the tail. While in the southwestern United States, it is depicted as more dog-like. Initial sightings and accompanying descriptions first occurred in Puerto Rico in 1995. The creature has since been reported as far north as Maine, as far south as Chile, and even outside the Americas in countries like Russia and Philippines. All of the reports are anecdotal and having been and have been disregarded as uncorroborated uh, or lacking evidence. Sightings in northern Mexico and in the southern United States have been verified on uh, as canids uh, afflicted by mange. So anyway, uh, Eric, what is this? So this is um, like an interdimensional kind of like Bigfoot is. Yes, except for um, what he what Eric's saying about it is it's like a lower a lower life form than Bigfoot. Bigfoot is is more of an intelligent. There's an yeah. intelligent there. Are. This is this the chupacabra is definitely. Like a more of an animal type of thing from a, but not not necessarily an intelligent okay life form. Right. Yeah. Well, let's go by the uh, questions from the community, my wonderful community. I have heard that it's well an interdimensional creature. Either way, is it from natural evolution or created by entities? And if so, for what reason? So no, Earth is saying it's more of a natural evolution. Okay. It's almost like um, like Eric is saying, and of course a lot of this stuff is like this. So you know, if you look at um the big Bigfoot, uh, mermaids, fairies, a lot of them are coming from some place else, and yeah. and part of it is is for us humans here to see things that are like, wait, what's going on? But he's saying like with the chupacabra, it's almost like wherever they're coming from, it's like the portal opens up. And somebody or some being from the other from that dimension kind of tosses them in here, and then they're around, and then they bring them back. Like a Bigfoot can like open and you know, it's like a doggy door. door. Kind of, yes. Go and do your business. Yeah. Suck blood, then come back. Yeah. Wow. Yes, and it's it's um, but they're not necessarily themselves controlling. Okay. When they're here and when they're leaving. Okay. Sound like they're not very intelligent. Are they smarter than dogs, or vice versa? Um, and that like a, like a. They're like a, they're about, and I of course I don't mean when I people I don't don't get upset. I don't mean that dogs are lower life forms, but but no. it's, it it oh. is it is like a similar kind of okay. energy. Like yes, as far as intelligence goes, okay. and what they're and, capable of doing here. Okay, in a psychics book. They said that the chupacabra was brought into existence by imagination rather than rather a creation from a belief system that a person manifested. Could that be true? Like thought creation? So, so we're like a golem is what they're called. And when so many people think it and believe it. That it oh, yeah. I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah. Eric says, no, this is this is a creature. So okay. To speak that that lives someplace else. Cool. Um, is it real? Is it the same as the nah Nahual? A Nahual is known as a human who shape shifts into an animal. Something they say witches are able to to do. Is it the same so, as that? Is that even true? There, yes. So wherever that Eric says wherever that 
came from, the, that particular term. It was from a, somebody seeing a chupacabra because he said they can kind of look like a dog man. Oh, yeah, years. right. Right. You know, um, so yes, this is the same. He says it's the same thing. Um, now, well, as far as like shape shifting and, and this sort of thing, that is something completely different. Yeah. Okay. That particular thing is, is a chupacabra. Do you want to add anything else to the description other than what I read off, Eric? Um, it's, it sounded pretty so, good. So. Yeah, it was. It was pretty. It was pretty complete. He says sometimes, um, what what it is is that there is the the eye sometimes look a little bit more human. But he says if you look at how many different how many different ways dogs look. Yeah. Like chupacabras, there is some diversity oh. in what they look like, maybe even a little bit more so than there is with the Bigfoot. Are like they related? Diversity. Oh, that makes sense. Are they related to Dogman? Um, no, not okay. re no, Dogman is something different, he says. Can they? But they do kind of look, they can look a little bit more human here sometimes. Oh, okay. Are you a shapeshifter avoiding contact with humans? So uh, do we answer that? They're, they're not shapeshifters? They're not shapeshifters. No, shapeshifters oh, are right. different. Okay. Yeah. Shapeshifters, at least at least in part, would be like extraterrestrial from another planet, highly intelligent life form type of thing. Okay. How is it able to feed on its prey? So, so Eric is saying some of this is like what we would expect from a predator in the wild eating, like actually eating. Okay. Yes. Okay. So it doesn't just suck blood. It doesn't just suck blood, no. Because they say, how is it, it, this person asks, how is it able to remove organs and blood without anything left behind? Do they drag um, it to their side of the, the portal and then eat it and then toss well, the they're, rest? Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah, they're still eating it. Yes, they're, it, yes, they're it's okay. being eaten. Yeah. How's nothing left behind? No, no blood on the ground or anything. It's like um, this it's almost like um, the birds, the big the birds that eat every the vultures. Oh yeah, right. It's it's like where everything is used now. As far as like the no blood being left behind, um, that is almost like a cleanup after the fact. Okay. Okay. To add to the mystery for us, so to speak. Oh. Okay. Well, maybe they so suck much of the blood out. out. Maybe they suck much of the blood blood out first. Yes, it, because Eric's saying sometimes there is some disturbing stuff left behind, but um, it's like um, there it's it's done very cleanly, and it has there there are being from there wherever they're coming from that will kind of oh. uh, clean, clean up, up on our farm. <laughs> To add to the mystery of it. Otherwise, it would just look like um, like any kind of animal attack. Okay. Can it fly? Any of them? No, but they can really jump pretty good. Like, really? so it could look like if somebody says that they've seen that they've seen one fly, they have a better jump radius. Oh, so they're they doing the long jump. jump. Yeah. The long jump, yes, and like some some of the dogs we have here, yes, wow. yeah, but they don't have wings and they don't fly. Okay, not the chupacabra. Okay, could any of these be an experiment made by benevolent or malevolent beings, either this side of the, the portal or the other? It's been an experiment gone wrong. No, Eric says this is not an experiment gone wrong. Okay. It's just that they're disturbing looking for the people who have seen them. Like yeah. they don't, you know, even here in the wild, like on Earth, like you see a cougar in the wild, it's majestic, and you know, you see a bear in the wild. Like we're you, like our animals, like this isn't necessarily for us to see like a majestic being, yeah, like a majestic creature. But actually, where they come from, they might be considered. Uh -huh. You don't really want to run into one in the wild, but like you don't want to run into a cougar in the wild here, you know? But, yeah, no. Yeah. There's a theory that this, along with other creatures, uh, was made in a lab by government. Is that true or not? No. No. This is, this is, yeah, this is something that 
Now, now that does not mean that there are not experiments that have gone wrong that oh, look yeah. but like not this or that. Yeah, correct. Where are you? We the places that was were mentioned are those mostly true? Russia, as far as Maine, all that, or could this be other things? Or really, where are they? If not yeah. all of those places. So, so when they initially started coming here, or or being sent here a little bit, I guess it was it was in those that area. But now oh. it's almost like okay, let's see how it does here. I mean that. That's kind of how a lot of stuff that has traveled interdimensionally has been done. You know, like Bigfoot sightings are, you know, initially they were in, in certain areas. Even now they're still kind of more heavy in certain areas. It's like, okay, it works. Let's try this. And then they expand out. But there's also all of these things that, that come here. They're here way more than they're ever seen huh? being here. Yeah. Interesting. Hello, Mr. Chupacabra, sir. Where are you from? And what is the purpose of your visit to Earth? So from another dimension, not another planet, universe, et cetera, correct? Yeah, it's, it, it, Eric was saying interdimensional. So, I mean, I guess in another dimension on another planet, I, I guess okay. is where they would be from. You know, that's how it feels like. They're not, they're not from spirit, okay? okay? So they're not, this is an actual physical being that exists in another dimension. Um, so where they're exactly from, even with Eric's help, I don't know. I don't know okay. where that is. But really the purpose, the purpose of it is, number one, like Eric was saying, for us to see it. Like humans, we need to see this sort of thing. But also these kind of tests are, are happening all the time. Like what does make it an in interdimensional travel? What could survive? In another oh. dimension, on another. It, so it's kind of like part of a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. You know, the chupacabra is being sent to other, you know, planets in our dimension. You, it, there's like this kind of stuff. You know, mermaids do pretty well here, but they might not do well in another dimension oh. or another planet. It, it's kind of like, it's just, okay. kind of just for experimentation or for fun purposes to see what will make it there, you know? Eric, what do their handlers that toss them out the doggy door, what do they look like? Are they humanoid looking? Or are they? They are. They are right. actually, yes. Like yeah, a... Eric showed me a quick a quick glance, um, a little bit um, shinier. Okay. Like, like, I guess, brighter looking. Like What color are they? Um, bluish, white. Yeah, there's, there's like a bluish, a bluish cast. But very bright looking. Okay. I don't know if that may help somebody. That are they help nice? Somebody. Yeah, they are. And and but human looking okay. in the in the face. Um, they're not very tiny. Um, but there is also wherever they're from, you know, like here on Earth, we're very diverse with how we look. There's a lot of diversity with the okay. physical appearance. Okay. Is this an evil creature or just an animal species? Just an animal species. I mean, if you see a chupacabra, don't try to make friends with it, is what mm. you say. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. You know, you don't want to try to make friends, but okay. it's not evil. This, it, the chupacabra is not evil. Have they ever eaten a human? Yes. How many have been eaten? Um, there's mm. been dozens. Oh, God. It's not. Okay. Um, it, it's more like I, like I, like I was saying with through Eric, they, they've been here way more than we've realized, way okay. more than we've seen, but there have been instances where, like, somebody's hiking and they're lost in the woods and they're never found again. Mm. Not all of them, but some of these end up, you know. Maybe. Yeah. Um, is it true they originated in Puerto Rico? I mean, maybe that's where the first doggy door was? The, the, the first, yeah, the first okay. sighting. First sighting, oh, okay. to be specific. All right. Uh, some people claim to have bodies of these stuffed on display. Is th that true, or did they just find something else and faking that? that no, they there is. Eric says there is evidence like that here. There, he's actually saying there's evidence of a bigfoot here too, but it's just really, really well. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, the, no, the chupacabra. There is there is a body of the chupacabra. Uh, but he says okay. there's three or four. But the but there are some fakes. Okay. Uh, is it a reptilian, or does it have any reptilian DNA? Eric says no. Okay, I Eric says it doesn't have reptilian DNA. No. Okay. How are they with their young? Do they pro procreate? First of all, they do procreate. How are they with their their mates? Are they monogamous? Are they you know partners for life? How are they with their children? They're, do they eat them? They do not mate for life. Okay. They do not mate for life. Eric said that it's um. I'm saying it's more like rats, which I really don't actually know what that means. They're like they procreate. It's kind of similar to rat. Oh, okay. You no, know anything about no. rat procreation? I don't no. either. Um, I don't. I, so they will eat their young. They will. It's not. Um, it's not like high on their list, but if there there is some okay. that will eat their young. They don't. Stay with their young for a long time. You know, like we would look at dogs, and if if a if a mother had a litter of puppies, they would stay. You know, they would just stay together. Mm -hmm. This is more like um, once they become a little bit older, they kind of go their separate ways. Although there is, Eric says, where they're from, there is a bit of pack mentality. Okay, makes sense. I'm gonna have to look up what pro how rats procreate because he said it's similar to I don't <laughs> rat know porn. What that means. I've been right rat porn. <laughs> Rat porn. Well, I, oh, I didn't mean look it up like that. I just meant. No, I, know. I want to ask why was I so scared this person uh, of it? Like so many kids in my uh, in my age, eight to thirteen, in the nineties and earliest two thousands, and the UFO connection to Puerto Rico and South America, if any. Yeah, this is like um just because of the time you grew up. Like uh, there's a lot of us my age group that are were terrified of quicksand. It's like because there was a lot of talk about it, there was a lot yeah. of, um, and that is, that's like Eric says, it's almost like certain things like that are implanted at the time, you know, drinking soda and eating pop rocks, you know, in the 80s, all oh, you would, it would make you explode or whatever, you know, it's like these things that just sort of get put out at certain times. This is why it was just talked about a lot. Maybe they use it like the chupacabra is going to get you if you don't go to bed now. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, is, is there a UFO connection at all? Um, to the chupacabra? I'm not sure. I I, if, if I, don't, I, I don't know. If reading that, it felt like two different questions. Yeah, I know. Did this person have any fear? No, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, do they have a life contract with some humans? Oh yes, so, oh absolutely. Some humans are contracted to see a chupacabra, just like any of it. Okay. Right. Any of those, you know, Bigfoot, the mermaids, the trolls, you know, humans, there are humans around who have seen yeah. all kinds of things. And yeah, yeah. It's usually, usually, not always, usually in the contract that you're going to have an experience like that, like a, okay. just a completely out of this world experience, wow. so to speak. If real, and we decided it was, what is the most important knowledge, Eric, that you could share with us or the Chupacabra, chupacabra would share with us? Um, yeah, to, 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 so Eric goes, always like, believe what you see, you know, like if you're, like if you're, if you're seeing something like that, even if people tell you, no, 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 you didn't see it, you can, you know, uh, trust that you've seen something extra worldly, mm -hmm. um, because that's how this goes. Part of this is like, I mean, look, we're not even that far away from everybody telling people, oh, you're crazy if you thought you saw a UFO. Now it's yeah. you know, accepted. It's like, okay, yes. almost everybody you ask is going to be like, yeah, I believe there's probably something. Yeah. That wasn't the same way 25 years ago. No. Um, so I've it's like, if you, have, cool. yeah, if you have an experience like this, don't be so afraid to share it. Like put the no. faster that we like put that stuff out there, um, the, the quicker we kind of start evolving and moving forward. Yeah. But the chupacabra itself, he says, isn't here to necessarily impart any wisdom on us. Okay. All right. Um, in that regard. Has the veil lifted a bit more? And uh, and will we experience more encounters with, because of that, with interdimensional beings? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what part of that acceptance. Like once people start mm-hmm. accepting it, we can see you'll see more. So, so like I know you have mentioned this before. Like, uh, like there was that the group of people that ships weren't even on their like radar, so they didn't see the ships coming. It was oh, yeah. like a group of so because because it wasn't something they could compute, they couldn't see it. Yeah, like the 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 Taino when Columbus and his ships came, they couldn't even see yeah. the ship. Because it yeah. was not part of their reality. That's yeah. so, cool. so the yeah, so the more like people share these their sightings of things, the quicker the veil thins and we can see more stuff. That's probably some people are probably like, Oh no, I'm not sharing anything. <laughs> they don't I want do. more of it, but <laughs> so the veil lifting. What is the veil? What's it made of? I don't get it. Everybody talks about the veil is getting thin. It's just a, it's a, it's, Eric says it's more of a term than a, than a physical thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's, it's our own, like we, our own veils, like what we're blinded to. Oh, like, the veil like of our eyes. Yeah. Of our third yeah. eye, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Do, are there any in Europe at all right now? Chupacabras? Yeah. Yeah. They've been, yeah, they've been, somebody's seen them in Europe. Okay. How many are there, Eric? Over the entire globe, you think? How many digits? Four digits, three digits. Uh, uh, he says tens of thousands. Okay. But we're not. Oh, oh, you're asking on Earth. You're asking on Earth. On yeah, Earth. yeah. No, 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 no. Um, because they mostly on that other planet when they come through the portal at any given time. About how? What's the average number? No, he says several hundred. I'm I'm up around like okay, seven, eight hundred, somewhere in there. <laughs> Are there any on my street? No, I'm kidding. Are you, okay, living here. Were you an accident left by aliens? No. No, it's, this is not an accident that they're being yeah, guided. I think we covered that. How many humans protect themselves and their animals from, how can, sorry, uh, humans protect themselves and their animals from chupacabras? I mean, any, any info on what helps keep them away? So Eric's saying if you were hiking and following like a bear spray, you know, there okay. that would that would deter them, this sort of thing. He's saying something about them not liking loud noises or high pitched noises, but your animals won't like that either. So it's not mm-hmm. gonna comfort your animals if you you know, if you do that. You know, they're not um he says they're they can fit into gates, but they're not super smart. It's not like they're able to break open a lock and get into okay. a gate like that. But if you have an open field where they can get I in, I, there you really can't because you you probably won't even know it's happening. Well, I know that a lot of people uh, put like a couple of donkeys or burros on their land to protect from not protect, but probably just give give warning Alert. Yeah. for bat, bobcats and things like that. Would that help? Yes, it it would. It would. The those type of animals would alert to a chupacabra as well. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting because it, he was saying like um like the smell of garlic or onion oh. um is there's I, there might be research on that there might be like okay. theory about something that they a smell that they don't like either okay. I don't I don't quite know exactly what it is okay all right uh how can okay did that one does it can does it have anything to do with low, high, or uh, or how high or low you vibrate energetically that attracts them to you or your animals, livestock? Um, like negative entities, you know, that sort of thing? So, no, they're not going to be necessarily more attracted to a low vibration or a high yeah. vibration, although they can be led by low vibration entities they can be they can be once they're here if there's a low vibration entity they can be manipulated by a low vibration entity oh interesting yes i only have a couple more questions if chupacabra kills livestock and sucks blood and exists on earth and what is okay they they do they are the ones sucking the blood okay right we've already answered that what yeah. is an afterlife if they have one? Uh, so like our wild animals, would okay. be, they, they do get to go to, to the other side. They get to have an animal life if they 
choose. I mean, you know, wild animals can become domestic animals in other lifetimes. So they, they have those same, there's something very hyena-like about them. I guess Eric is saying they're kind of like most similar maybe to a hyena here. Yeah. Like, and so he says in theory, like if a chupacabra baby was born here, yeah, they could be domesticated. domesticated. Yeah, wow. they could be. They're not necessarily a domestic animal where they come from, but you know, like people domesticate bears and lions have been yeah. domesticated. It kind of falls into that category is what he's saying, and it seems just like like old animals. They do go to the other side. I mean. Okay. You know, where where they're from, there's probably beings there that love chupacabras, you know, just like, oh, yeah. they're, you know. They're yeah. Oh. yeah. Do they spread, can they spread rabies? No. Okay. They don't have rabies. Do they only eat live animals or can they, do they, like vultures, eat the carcass? They, they, yes, they'll eat the carcass. And Eric says they also do some foraging as well. Okay. Foraging for... Um, I don't know berries. So okay, they'll eat bugs. Or they'll eat bugs okay. in the ground. Okay, they're I guess a bit more like goats. Like goats will eat anything. They're kind okay. of they will eat stuff. They'll eat stuff. Okay. Last question: Is it possible for us humans to be in physical contact with these other dimensional beings if our vibration is high enough? I mean, like. She would, Tressa would love to shake hands with Bigfoot. Yes, it is possible. And actually, Eric says when the timing is right, we'll actually get to that. That's kind of what this part of this experiment is, is to be able to have cohesiveness between interdimensional beings. And, you know, let's face it right now. It, it, a lot of people, a lot of humans right now, if they saw Bigfoot, would probably shit their pants. Yeah. You know? So... So he says, you you know, like we're kind of working up to that. It's part of the thinning of the veil. And yes, eventually we might be at the place where when Earth is, you know, the new Earth is like, okay, you're walking down the street and there's a chupacabra and you can say hi to it. And, hey, how's it? And, yeah. 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 That sounds good. Have tea with Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, anything else you guys want to add, Eric? Anything you want to say before we close? Please hit the like button and subscribe. It only takes a second, please. Yeah. No, no. He says, the only thing he said is if you do see one, he says you back away slowly. Okay. Like with a bear. Yes. It's like it's like that. And uh, even like with a dog, you don't really want to make direct eye contact, even though you're going to want to really, really look. Yeah. You, you slowly back and make yourself kind of like look a little bit smaller because they will, they would attack a human at this point mm -hmm. if they felt cornered or they were hungry oh yeah i would carry a ribeye around with me if i were y'all yeah toss it out and then run all right thank you jennifer love you love thank all you guys out there you. i love you eric we're gonna go to a crystal shop come on with me eric he loves you too and he'll be right there with you wait oh well keep yeah, me keep me okay well, i was oh. gonna say you don't have to 